Welcome back to a brand new Hot Off The Press London Weekend show. And from that bit of film we just flashed at you, I expect we be able to guess what we're taking a look at this week. Since our last show in the summer, punk rock's really taken off, both in London and in New York. And although anyone thinks punk is that great a name for it, it seems to have stuck. Punk magazine comes out in New York, and Sniffing Glue is the punk paper here, despite its ill-advised title. So it has its own magazines, its own bands, its own devoted fans, and of course its own style of dress. Even the conventional music papers like Melody Maker and NME have written columns about the latest cult, and it's just popping up in the national press. But what's punk all about? We went to a gig by the Sex Pistols just off Leicester Square to see what a punk rock evening was like. <laughs> you notice is that punk rock fans look as devastating as their music sounds. Torn clothes are held together with safety pins, there's lots of black leather and bizarre hair and the whole idea is to shock outsiders. <laughs> Zeppelin film last week. I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, Peter Grant can beat me up, but I, I, I fell asleep four rows from the front. You don't yawn, you don't have to pay five pounds, and you're not one of ten thousand people. What's your dress made from? <laughs> you know, you feel one of the crowds. What do you do? What do I do? <laughs> Typing. You're not a mouse, you know, like my Oldfield fans, you know? It's a different ball game now. It's all over that. It's all over. The music that was just based around an old standards, like being my like onion bands like that. They just played everybody else's and that everybody been playing for like 15 years. There's a couple of bands, like, killed bands, and you go, hey. 
Now they are all mostly country and western and written in blues. And what the hell good juice is that to man? <laughs> what was needed was a style of music that was as easy to play as pub rock, but rejected the past and had a new identity of its own. <laughs> what musicians do you write? I mean, if you think it's a good singer. I don't. <laughs> I don't have any heroes. <laughs> They're all useless. But well, there's no bands around, is there? None. None are accessible. Well, before you look Unless you pay a fiver to see them, and then you can't see them. And what sort of people kind of see you in the beginning? <coughs> well, no one knew us at the beginning. We just do everything we do and turn up. Because we used to turn up with the equipment and just like crash in and do the gigs. Nobody knew we was playing until we got there. We didn't even know actually. Well, so you reckon that was the only way to get a gig, was just to turn up first and... Yeah, that's how, I mean, but we can get gigs. <laughs> Fucking pushing. <laughs> Come in, get them. No, I'm sure. Come on, Sean. No. Well, when you stood up and started singing for the first time, what happened? I mean, go on, John, go on. It was wonderful. No, come on. People loved me. <laughs> I threw flowers. Well, look, I saw you the sixth time. <laughs> People were quite <coughs> shell shocked. <laughs> well, then you know yourself, don't you? What sort of people are trying to do? I don't know, just bored people. Bored out their brains with hippies. <laughs> What's this thing you've got against hippies? They're complacent. You were just attacking Top of the Pops and the sort of bands that are on there. What, do you think they're relevant to the kids 16 and 17? Of course they're not. Relevant to their mums and dads, but that's about all. What about bands like Rod Stewart? What about him? Mums and dads. Yeah. He's all round, isn't he? All round entertainment. He's an old f Things really started to move for the Sex Pistols when they were spotted by promoter Ron Watts, who gave them a booking at the 100 Club in Oxford Street. I saw them at High Wycombe. It was interesting because they really managed to upset the crowd, or most of the crowd, and they had some of their followers with them who looked like people I've never seen before in my life. What did they look like? Oh, amazing. They had this multicolored hair and they had clothes on which had been ripped to pieces and put back together with safety pins and it was very bizarre it's beyond anything that i'd seen beyond anything that i've hit high wickham before yeah probably since as well <laughs> what happened when they played down here well the first time they played uh, their audience turned out the bromley lot with the multicolored hair again and what have you and it was good we hadn't seen anything like it, and so we thought, well, we'll give it a try again, and there weren't very many people come in at first, you know. The first sort of half dozen gigs were very average in support, you know, any other band would have done as many people. But it's the actual um, followers that did it, you know, that turned the key. We've been there for five years or more, just waiting for this to happen, and now it's happened. It's like some of the pro dressing, it's just dressing exactly how you want to look, and finding clothes that are original. Not like wearing everything that everyone else wears, you know, looking just a bit different. Have you tried to get by in Spiller? Yeah, I did at the Hundred Club, the Hulk Festival. Susie and the Banshees. What did you see? The Lord's Prayer via Twist and Shout, knocking on Heaven's Door, and a bit of Deutschland and Deutschland do the rally. <laughs> what went down the verse? <laughs> All of it. It got boring in some parts, but it picked up. I know who's backing you up. Sid Vicious on drums, Steve Spunker on bass, Marco on guitar, and me just doing the vocals. Are you, are you a singer? Yeah. Have you sung before? Not on stage, no. Did you think that was important? Um, no. You, know, you can rehearse for two days in the garage and not have him play before and go out and do a gig. You know, it was like that before though, wasn't it? The skipper was like that. The skipper was very important in British music. That's where all the blues came from. How can you tell a good punk rock band from a bad one? Well, the audience judge that, I think. I think. Well, what do you think has produced punk rock? Why has it sort of sprung up? It had to, it was the only thing that could happen. I thought I was a UK Another
What do you mean? Do you mean you actually want to destroy them or you want to... Wipe them out. Uh, he wants that. He wants that. Oh, God. Complacent and apathetic old oh, <laughs> Walk up and down, do nothing and complain about everything. And watch Top of the Pops and send their boring little letters into Melody Maker week after week. That's what I want to get rid of. I actually want to get rid of it though. Push them out. Destroy them, eh? Destroy them one way or another. Destroy not not violent. <coughs> Get rid of them. But don't you get off on causing fights? No. Where did you hear that from? Oh, gosh, it's really funny. No, I know. It's just the same as when it was before, when they had the stones and the hoo and they came along. And they thought they were great because they destroyed everything that went before them. But now they can't take it because we're destroying everything that's gone before us. That's all it is. It's not, it's not violence, it's just excitement causes it most of the time, you know. When we're playing, people get excited and worked up. Mm. That's because people aren't even used to people standing up and jumping around, they just want to sit down all the time. And as soon as anything other than that happens, they get really kind it's of shocked. Violent. Yeah, it's no, good. If, if someone hands. stands up there and goes, yeah, it's... They they go, go, right, he's starting, go on, get him out. The usual. <laughs> The tales of violence at punk rock gigs may have been exaggerated, but they were undoubtedly based on facts. And they've led to a situation where some fans expect and even demand trouble. Ron Watts, who first introduced punk rock to London, now supports a ban on it. I asked him if he wasn't going to lose out by banning such a booming fashion. Yeah, that's true. Um, but the club has a, a long-standing reputation, and, it, and there is a lunatic fringe that follows them that, you know, that, that are liable to be violent, and we can't have those people. But when the hysteria that always surrounds a new fashion, be it clothes or music, dies down, what's left? And is the much publicised violence at punk rock gigs really any worse than at other equivalent events? So far, the punk scene seems to have avoided the premeditated confrontations of the Teddy Boys and of the Mods and Rockers. Is Johnny Rotten the new David Bowie, or will all his tough lyrics and aggression just look dated next year? Right now, the punk musicians can make out that they're just the same as their fans, because most of them still are, and they can sing about getting rid of the establishment because they're not part of it. But what happens if they do make it and get big and successful? What would success do to Johnny Rotten? I mean, the day Johnny Rotten goes back on the words he writes in his songs is the day he dies, and I know that for a fact. So it's a ridiculous question to ask. You know, they're just very, very committed. They're in this band because they're committed. They formed it. It's the reason they're the, the whole founders of the new scene in music, because they thought, we're bored of what's happening, we're going to do something. That's why they are the best band in it, because they're the originators. Don't accept the old order. Get rid of it. What do you think about bands like the Stones? I don't. <laughs> I don't even consider them a band. They're more like a business. What a business? <laughs> Yeah, but surely by making a record, you're on the way to right, get becoming out. part of the system. No. Not, not if you don't let yourself. But supposing your record's a success. Yeah. yeah. I mean, which there are big charts, it will be. Yeah, yeah. And you yeah, yeah, pay yeah, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Supposing you make a lot of money, what are you, how are you going to be different from the Stones? I don't need a Rolls Royce, I don't need a house in the country, I don't need to live in the south of France. I'm happy as I am and I'm going to carry on. Finsbury Park with these people. <laughs> don't live in Finsbury Park. <laughs> Too many people have to suss. Too many people 
of the water An unlimited amount Too many out there, too many out Oh! Yeah, oh, oh. And you thought that we were faking That we were all just money making You do not believe we're for real Or you would lose your cheap appeal Don't judge a book just by the cover Unless you cover just another And blind acceptance is a sign Of fucking fools who stand in line With an unlimited supply That was the only reason We all had to say goodbye And then I had to cry There was no reason why I tell you it was a crime I only did it because I'm fine I do not need the pressure Cause I know she's just the world Sounds cool, buddy.
Over. I'm fucking bashing my nose open again, ain't that good, eh? Yeah, that's all crazy. Look at that, a living circus. Thank <laughs> you. 
Problems for you cowboys. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> 
I see we've got a whole section of the silent majority around now.